Brett Tacky, we're back here at New Media Expo, uh, day two, and joining us, Mr. Robert Scoble. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you for taking time. Out. Yeah, I, I haven't seen you since uh, PubCon Boston was yeah, the last time. Yeah, that was time. a good, good bar crawl there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was one of our smallest PubCons ever, right there around <laughs> Easter, so we'd love to have you back out again sometime uh, yeah. November. Um, since then, you've made some personal big changes, uh, no longer with Microsoft, no. uh, now managing director of Fast Company TV. Yep. Um, how come the big switch? Oh, that, uh, well, for Microsoft, Microsoft, I joined a s small startup called PodTech, and then uh, we ran through the cash. And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, I see how this is going to go, so i got to get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a real job. Boy, yeah. it's cherry uh, no, gig now. It's, uh, I've been real fortunate. I've been able to get really interesting interviews with a large number of people from politics to technology, mostly technology. But, um, yeah, we just took our show on the road and said, you know, who, where would it fit the best? What brand would that help it out the most? And, you know, Fast Company was was one of my favorite brands. I was a columnist for the magazine for a long time, so right. it just made a lot of sense. And right. Sure enough, our uh, access has gone way up to all sorts of fun stuff. We were in um, Congress for a whole two days, meeting all sorts of congressmen and the FCC commissioner and the CEO of the federal uh, or the telecommunications, uh, the telecommunications and cable association, all sorts of fun stuff. And that's just in DC on one little trip. You know, next Monday we're going to Neil Young's house to study how uh, he he wants to really increase the quality of uh, music that we listen to. He said MP3 just isn't good enough anymore, and so he, we're going to talk to his uh, audio engineer and talk about what it is to make music and what they have in the studio now and how they'd like to deliver that to everybody and they can't because the machines aren't getting enough and the distribution systems aren't getting enough. So. Well, you seem like you've really refound your passion again at, yeah. since leaving Microsoft, this stuff. Uh, yeah, being in the I'm video. a geek. I like talking about tech and I like also studying businesses and, and studying innovators in business. You know, um, I just interviewed uh, one of the top architects in the world who built, who designed Staples Center in Los Angeles and the Philadelphia Eagles Stadium and, and all sorts of stadiums all over the world. And, you know, meeting guys like that and talking with them, it's just fascinating. And you always learn something, you know. But hell, after the cameras were off, we compared iPhone apps, you know. So, <laughs> you know and it's always fun to talk about, talk to people like that because they've had different experiences than you ever could have. And, right. and they see the world a different way, right? I've never designed a sports stadium. What is that? What is that like to design something that takes a billion dollars of to build, you know? And um, it's a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, you know, let's jump ahead a little bit. You played the whole social media thing. I think if nothing else, you are an incredible leading edge. You, you just have a knack for finding that what's out there on the leading edge. From social media, you were playing Facebook before anybody else was playing Facebook. Uh, Twitter, you've got like a bazillion followers. What are you, 20,000 now or 30,000? 30,000, 31,000, something like that. I don't know. And there was a bit of controversy last week because you were up around 30,000 and everybody else got capped at 2,000. Us little people do. <laughs> hey, you know, that actually that you know, it's it's uh, when I see something that's getting hot early, and I, you know, I, I mean, I was at the Southwest Southwest conference. I saw everybody talking about it. That's how I, how I'm early. It's like, you know, go and get as many pe as your friends to sign up for it as possible because God knows when they're gonna t turn it off. You right. Know? <laughs> right, right. No, but I. <laughs> I, I was I didn't do it for that reason. I was just trying to study how early adopters are using it. So I was following everybody I could who was an early adopter. Same thing right now on friend feed. Yeah, you know, I even put a friend feed on my phone. Okay, so um, friend feed is the next thing you're adopting. Well, really? friend feed is an interesting thing. It's it's not good enough yet to go mainstream. Um, but it was started by the guy who built Gmail and the, another guy who was built Google Mail, uh, Maps and another guy just joined who built Google Talk. So they're getting superstars from Google and that tells me that they're going to do something interesting right there. Now, I visit hundreds of times a day and it's almost always up. Uh, it's very rare it's down. So that fills in some of the need of Twitter. having a, a backup system to Twitter. <laughs> And it it's also has a wonderful search engine, which makes sense, right. given that they get superstars from Google. But it's it's not there yet. It's good enough for geeks like me and you to use it, but like my wife's on it, she goes, I just don't get it. I don't get what makes you so excited about it. And I go, 
just to hang out for a few months and wait wait for them to come out with a few more things. For instance, I can't talk to the search engine very well. I'd, I'd like to tr talk to it and say, pull me out every item that talks about podcasting that has two or more likes. Likes or little votes for something. There's Leo, you know. And uh, you can't do that. Right. So it's it's really frustrating. You know, that's what the bad part of being an early adopter is you hit the edges of things very quickly and, and you know where the edges are and then when you see the edges move out a little bit, then you know, oh, the mainstream is ready. It's ready to go bigger. You know? Well, in your presentation today or your talk, I don't yeah. want to call it a presentation because you, you, you don't use PowerPoint anymore. <laughs> In fact, that was one of the funniest things you said, was yeah. you won't use PowerPoint anymore. <laughs> so uh, one thing you did say, though, is that we were pretty much on the leading edge of stuff here with video yeah. today. Uh, not necessarily podcasting, but video, definitely. Yeah. Uh, what What's next? Just more expansion, or is there going to be a, a, a tipping point here pretty soon? Are, are we still on the upward I, climb? I think we're still on the upward climb because it's a trillion-channel world, and what I mean by that, it's a Google world, right? Most, like I said in my talk, most people understand only one thing about their computer, how to type into that search box. Right. They don't understand what a file system is or what a database is or how to even install apps, right? They don't know how to install apps anymore. Right. They know that search box, that's all I know. So if you're in that search box and they're searching for things, there's it's very rare that there's video on that page. Right. So that tells me that there's a lot of opportunity still to develop that video for this trillion channel world um, until, one, one until the, it even becomes competitive, right? And until you have to start worrying about, oh, I'm starting to th see two or three of videos on each page, you know? Right. And then you have to worry about being good, right? Because only the best one will be on the top. Right. Right? Well, but, the interesting thing you talked about was keyword targeting. I'm thinking keyword targeting on video through Google Trends, that's actually fairly revolutionary still today. Yeah, I, I was really surprised that only about two-thirds of the audience that even used that tool or even considered how people use Google to find their content, right? Right. So if you if you don't understand that, then you're probably not going to do a good title tag on your web page. You're probably not going to write about content that could hit an audience, a huge audience. You might be writing about something that's interesting, but if you just switch the content a a little bit, it would be a huge audience, right? You know, a little bit of optimization uh, there. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, Gary Vaynerchuk was saying. Well, you know, the way to get into the wine business now is to do a blog about Chardonnay. Well, you you might use a tool like that to see which varietal is actually the biggest audience, right? You might find out by using that tool that nobody's right. searching for Chardonnay, but everybody's searching for Merlot. Right. So pick Merlot, don't pick Chardonnay. Right. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't use a tool like that to understand how people are searching, how how real people are behaving on the internet. Right, right. Well, we are just about out of uh, YouTube times. YouTube! <laughs> well, thank you for joining Thanks. us. Thank you.